Hello everyone, my name is Marco Bannock. Today I will be talking to Grant, Alex, and Callum. And today I will be talking to you about why electric vehicles are not the solution for a zero emission future just yet. In an age where the environment is a main topic of concern, the adaption of electric vehicles should sound appealing to all. Less CO2 emissions, cleaner environment. But it's not that simple. These electric vehicles do not grow on trees. The production process in light of new research is not near as clean as we think, making these newfound tools for the environment almost obsolete in their attempt to mitigate our environmental impact. On top of this, there's been numerous studies done by highly respected universities that make it even more apparent that these electric cars are not as effective as we may have thought. With climate issues at the forefront of this debate, I think it's also important to bring up the social impact of electric cars as well as take a deeper look into where the parts for these vehicles are coming from. Blinded by the thought of a zero emission car and backed by government rebates, many do not see the impact these cars are really having, bringing up the age old quote, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Tesla and other electric motor vehicle companies pride themselves on zero emissions in all their electric car models. But what does zero emissions really mean? This simply means that the car does not exhaust any harmful emissions during vehicle operation, according to governments all over the world. As great as this sounds, all electric vehicles meet this standard, as none have an exhaust, making this title, zero emissions, very conditional. For example, a study done by MIT at their Tranic lab found that an electric Tesla model SP100D saloon produced carbon dioxide at a rate of 226 grams per kilometer. The same test was then done on a gas-driven Mitsubishi Mirage, which was responsible for just 192 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer. Some, quick to claim that this is an anomaly, would be surprised to hear that MIT's findings backed up that of the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, which last year declared larger electric vehicles can have a higher life cycle greenhouse gas emission than smaller conventional cars. So what's going on here? Surely electric vehicles are necessarily greener since they don't have an exhaust pipe. What on earth could be causing the pollution? First, there's the obvious point that the energy that charges the batteries of an electric car must come from somewhere. Unless you own your own private power station that runs on renewable energy, the chances are you are using the national power grid to charge your car overnight. In the US, 61% of the national power grid's energy comes from fossil fuels. And researchers at Penn State estimate that 83% of the power being used in electric vehicles is sourced from non-renewable energy. So while having an electric car certainly reduces roadside emissions, the increased demand required to charge electric vehicles means more fossil fuels are being burnt at power stations, which of course, worldwide pump millions of tons of pol pollutants into the atmosphere. Researchers at Penn State continue by stating that global shift to electric cars would only reduce our greenhouse gas, gas emissions by 2.2%, destroying the narrative that electric cars are the solution to a zero emission world. While the, sorry, while the production of electric cars themselves carry a very comparable rate of greenhouse gas emissions to the production of gas-powered cars, the production of batteries compared to their internal combustion engine counterparts does not. As the world moves to electric cars, the desire for longer and longer ranges of trips becomes more and more apparent. While this is not only an issue because these larger engines require more energy to produce, they also require a heavier car to house. A car analyst and energy expert, Nico Melki, explains to the Financial Times, if we really care about CO2, we could reduce car size and weight. While this might bring to light my earlier point about how larger electric vehicles, such as that Tesla model mentioned before, produce such a large amount of CO2, it does not address the concern about battery production. Many electric car companies keep a veil of secrecy over the inner workings of their electric motor production for competitive reasons. But there's still enough information out there to get a full picture view of their environmental impact. Lithium ion batteries, like the ones used by Tesla Motor, 
Tesla motors, sorry, require large amounts of lithium, a previously limited use substance in human products. Tesla alone used almost 19,000 tons of lithium in 2020, and the global lithium production was 76,000 that same year, according to Statista.com. While these numbers alone may not seem concerning, when you consider that lithium is used in other products and the growing number of companies developing and producing electric cars, the supply is clearly not enough to meet our demands. Due to this newfound demand, many new mines are opening around the world, most notable in the Andes Mountains, in the Andes Mountain chain of South America. While lithium is a gateway for humanity to move away from reliance on fossil fuel production, lithium itself falls on falls under the same umbrella as fossil fuels like coal and gas. Approximately 2.2 million liters of water is needed to produce just one ton of lithium. This number alone is concerning, but when you put it into perspective that these mines often reside in arid dry places with limited access to water nearby, it spikes the concern. Without access to water nearby, some mines transport water to these mines, adding another layer of pollutants to this already demanding process. In areas where water is slightly more accessible, natural reservoirs like rivers and lakes are being drained at considerable rates, leaving some communities like the Tococanano in northern Chile without water for the past seven months. Another product used in electric car batteries is cobalt, a slightly more readily available substance, but one that does not come without a cost to humanity. Many of the world's cobalt comes from the Congo, one of the poorest regions of the world. While the environmental impact of mining the substance does not come nearly close to the same rate as lithium, the human and humanity, hum, human humanitarian rights cost does. They do not use power tools, they do not wear face masks, and often many of them are children. These cobalt miners know their work is physically dangerous and death and injury from tunnel collapse are not uncommon. According to a 2018 article, by the Washington Post, 60% of the world's cobalt is mined by hand in the Congo. And of that 60%, 52% of that is mined by children. Not only is the fact that around 35% of the world's cobalt is mined by children concerning, but the long-term health effects of this are as well. Cobalt is a highly dangerous metal, and exposure to it is not only an issue for the children mining it, but future generations as well, as birth defects and premature births are on the rise in the region due to the mines. With all this information presented above, it is important to note that electric cars do benefit the environment, just not as much as people think. Until the world finds a more readily accessible resource to build these batteries that do not require the impact on both the environment and the people, we are not ready to call these electric vehicles our golden ticket to a cleaner world. Humanity must address the bigger issue at hand. Where does our power come from? And only then can we claim that we are making the right steps towards a better and cleaner future. Thank you.